Hello everyone, my name is Russ Grease and today I'm going to be continuing on my um, EPG, Stan Meyer's EPG system. Uh, this is going to be a more informational video and uh, it's going to be part three in the series. So um, today I'm going to talk about uh, what kind of tubing. Again, I've got some new information on that. Um, the particle generation, um, you know, I've got uh, more information on that. And uh, the core material for the primaries um, and more information about that. Um, but I'll get to that all in a minute. First, I want to say thank you. Um, everybody's been very helpful. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is probably my email. Um, YouTube messages are great. Um, comments are awesome. That works fine. Um, but if you send me a YouTube message, uh, you'd be better off just sending me an email. It's rwg42985 at aol.com. Um, I'd also like to um, thank everybody who's uh, contributed uh, their either their time um, their resources um, or, or all of the above. Um, I am asking for any funny money if you'd like to send it um, to me. You can email it to me uh, via P uh, PayPal. Uh, email address rwg42985 at aol.com. Um, if you don't have, if you can't contribute that way, um, I do have a parts list. If you can contribute any parts uh, or pieces of anything you may have or somebody you may know may have. Um, if you can't do either of those, if you can uh, volunteer your time, um, do your own research. Um, look at this stuff. Um, look at everything I'm giving you and then give me feedback. Uh, that is a very, very good way to donate um, what you can if you don't have any of those other things. And uh, if you don't, um, you know, I, I understand what kind of boat you guys are in. I'm in the same boat as you are. Totally understandable. And um, let's just do something together. Let's build this together. Um, there is a guy by the name of Matt, and he has donated his time and his resources, and he's actually building a website um, to help gather up more information and put it in one central location. Um, so when that time comes, I'll give you that email address. All right, so thank you, everyone. First of all, I want to say thank you. Um, another thing I want to say is thank you to Alex Petty. Um, Alex Petty has been doing a lot of research on this uh, prior to me, and uh, if it wasn't for him... Probably never would have looked at this stuff. Um, so thank you, Alex. And uh, look up Alex Petty's website. I'll put it in the description as long uh, as well as everything else. I'll put it in the description as well. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about one patent today. I don't want to make this video too terribly long. It's the Canadian patent again, that very first patent. And the number is right there. One, two, one, three, six, seven, one. Uh, it's called electrical particle generator. <clears throat> and what I want to talk about is the particle generation. Um, that's one thing that a couple people who have been working on this, uh, we've been discussing um, in the um, comments below the videos, you know, what's going on, uh, how do we make this, and then how do we test the gas. Um, the best way to test the gas, in my opinion, would be build a particle accelerator as Stan shows and try it there. Um, another idea was to make um, put this stuff into a solution of water and soap and the bubbles would be magnetically um, you know you could move the bubbles around with magnetics and that's a good idea um, I have no idea if it's going to work but it's worth a shot but uh, from my experience from uh, Alex Petty and his work um, even without the magnetic particles um, it's, um, he was basically just using hydrogen and oxygen from a from a cell, running it right through a magnetic field, and, and then into his gas core transformer, uh, which he calls it a gas core transformer, um, and he's getting good results out of that. Um, so, the magnetic particles, uh, he's not even um, doing that right now. So it's very interesting that this stuff is actually being validated by other other sources um, like Alex. And they're not even doing it the way that Stan um, basically, you know, said that that he was doing it. Um, but the main thing I want to talk about in the particle generation is this right here, this diagram. You've all seen this. Showed it to you. Um, it looks like a chamber with two electrodes, and um, the magnetic vaporized particles are coming off of that. Okay. So I'm just going to read through a, th a few things on the patent and um, go from there. So bear with me. 
I got it all marked through here. I just gotta go through. All right. Um, page four. It says, still another objective of the present invention is to provide a generator for developing magnetized particles for the use in an electrical particle accelerator. So you have magnetic particles. We know that. That's a, that's a basic, that's what we've been talking about the whole time. All right. And it also says, um, therefore, the elements may be particles suspended in a fluid medium, such as a gas, a liquid, lightweight movable solid particles and more preferably gas which is what we are mainly going to be using in this device uh, at least I will be uh, in the application of suspended solid magnetic particles it may be described uh, desirable sorry to to vacu evacuate the tubing to reduce the resistance to its flow so it says in the application of suspended solid magnetic particles, um, so not vaporized but solid, so maybe something along the lines of a ferrofluid, um, something of that nature. It's very interesting. It said uh, it may be desirable to evacuate, evacuate, e v a c u a t e. My English is awesome. The tubing to reduce the resistance to its flow. So, um, just something interesting that was in the patent there. But we're going to be using a gas um, and probably not solid magnetic particles, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. But it's another something to think about. He always talks about being pressurized in his other patents, but this patent he doesn't talk about anything about pressure. He more talks about uh, vacating the area, so more of a vacuum um, from what I'm gathering, or a vacated area of oxygen, um, ambient air, stuff like that. So if we're using argon, which is what I'll be trying first. If we're using argon in our gas processor, um, you know, it's possible that you, the vacate is what he's talking about. Vacated chamber is actually just basically filled with argon or another type of gas and not ambient air. It's not necessarily a vacuum. It could be a pressure, but it's just a vacated chamber. So it's kind of hard to tell what's going on there. Another thing I got here, um, this is page 8. I'm just kind of skipping around in here in this patent. With reference to figure 9, let me show you that real quick. You always got to reference these things whenever you read through this. If you don't, this stuff doesn't make sense. I've tried it. You got to look at the patents and the pictures. Okay, there's, there's 9. You got a mechanical pump and a pickup coil on the other side with magnetized particles in there permanently magnetized particles in that one. The one with the pump supposedly has permanently magnetized particles, where the other ones, I guess, don't. It's kind of weird. With reference to figure 9, there is illustrated a mechanical particle accelerator. That's the pump. In this embodiment, the magnetic particles are permanently magnetized prior to being encapsulated in a non-magnetic pipe. So, that's kind of interesting. That could actually be some sort of a ferrofluid. fluid. Um, it's a pump with a plastic propeller but does it have to be gas? Uh, not necessarily. This particular setup, and he's later on um, electrically um, moving the particles instead of with a mechanical pump. Um, he may have been trying stuff like ferrofluid. Um, a guy by the name of Don, the uh, same guy that posted the videos of Stan Meyer's estate, um, I was able to talk to him, and he's um, giving me parts of information that I'm trying to put back together with this. He hasn't studied the EPG system very much, um, is what he's telling me. But uh, I talked to him and he did find a picture um, of a ferrofluid bottle. Um, it was 100 milliliters, is what he said. It said on the bottle, 100 milliliters. And let me find it. 100 milliliters. Um, and it had a website actually on the front of it, which is kind of interesting for um, the dates. you got to remember the dates is another thing that's kind of confusing on this whole thing. Uh, it's like the first patent, but yet it uh, the ferrofluid had uh, amazingmagnetics.com on it. So when did they actually have the internet? It probably wasn't back in the 80s. So it's real interesting. It's, it's a whole other conversation. 
Anyway, back to the fluid. So it could have been a ferrofluid. Um, I believe he did try that. And then again, that uh, Don said that could have been either someone else's or his father's or so forth and so on. We, we don't know. But it's just something to think about. Okay, here's, here's the important parts that I've been rereading. Um, and I've read this patent so many times, and each time I read it, I just get more and more information. So read the patents more than once, believe me. You'll pick out more and more things, like watching a movie. You watch a movie, you see things, you see more things and more things every time you watch it. It's pretty cool. It says here, figure 10, in reference to figure 10. I'll show you that so you don't have to look it up. Uh, these patents are all in the description. Um, everything that I am telling you and going to show you, I will have in the description, either under a downloadable link or, um, or something in that manner. This is the number 10, the one with the chamber and the electrodes. Okay. This is real important to me, and uh, this is a good conversation for uh, for this video. It says there is illustrated there is an illustrated apparatus for carrying out the process of vaporizing material into vaporized particles, and therefore and thereafter magnetizing the particles by subjecting them to a magnetic field. Okay, so you va you vaporize the material, and then you run it through permanent magnets. That's what it's stating, or a magnetic field. Um, it could be an uh, electromagnetic coil as well. It says the chamber 155 is a vacated chamber having positioned in its lower half a portion of pair of electrodes uh, of magnetizable material. Now the magnetizable material I'm going to be trying is iron, nickel, cobalt, um, and I'll even try some neodymium um, type of material. Uh, a source of voltage, this is the important part, a source of voltage provides voltage and current of opposing polarity. Okay, so I'm using AC right now for my setup and he is stating that he's using opposing polarity which would be a DC setup. And I have a little bit of verification on that I'll show you. So we'll keep reading via terminals 154 and 156 to the electrodes via a wire connections. Uh, the area between the ends of the electrodes is the spark gap. Okay. Here's a pretty cool thing that I found. You like this. Alright, lost my page. It's alright. Okay. This is a connector. You see how it's solid? Here's another connector. You see how it's not solid? That to me would be indicating polarity. Alright. So this is not an AC arc here. This is a DC arc. Okay, those are my thoughts. Um, and then my question to you all, does it really matter? Um, you're still vaporizing material. Um, I don't know. I really, I really do not know. Good question, right? I know. All right, let's keep going. Upon the application of power to the magnetizable material electrodes, uh, the tip of the electrodes in the spark gap will be vaporized into particles. So earlier it kind of says what's between the spark gap will be vaporized and here it says um, the tip of the electrodes in the spark gap will be vaporized into particles. Okay, let me look at something. Okay, so now let's continue. The particles rise uh, you what the particles 180 rise you use and enter into a non-magnetic pipe and it makes sense into the particles progress in movement they pass between the magnetic field generator the particles each take on a magnetic charge as mag magnetic magnetized particles uh, and therefore are discharged via part 190 to the electrical particle generator above described so that's just talking about after you vapor, vaporize the material, it goes through the permanent magnet setup and into the particle generator, which is what we're talking about. Um, but it's real interesting. It says the tip of the electrodes in the spark gap will be vaporized into particles. So, you know, a pointier electrode would vaporize quicker, I'm sure. But that's just a way of stating it, too. But it does say, in the upon the application of power to the magnetizable material electrodes. Um, now, that's in the older patent here. In the newer patent, he's using a hydrogen and oxygen mix within this tube to create the, the effect. 
Um, so these two patents are probably talking about two totally different types of gas, in my opinion, um, because of the way it's all set up. The other patent I'm talking about is the uh, the other Canadian patent, gas electrical hydrogen generator. Um, you can look those up. One of them is the Canadian patent one two two eight eight three three this is all in that document I've got posted on my description along with everything else all right so but it does say magnetizable material electrodes which would be an iron cobalt nickel something along those lines uh, and in his lecture he talks about argon and iron um, let's see what else I got real quick all right this is on the very last page before you get to the, uh, the pictures an assembly this is talking about that um, that last photograph I just showed you with the, the chamber and the electrodes. That one there. An assembly providing a magnetized particle for utilization in an electrical particle generator comprising of a chamber and pair of magnetizable uh, material electrodes positioned therein. A source of voltage slash current of opposing polarity, opposing polarity, applied to said electrodes and said magnetizable material becoming vaporized upon the application of said voltage current in the electrodes a pipe connected to the sad chamber and means to directing vaporized particles to said pipe a magnetic field generator having the other end of a sad pipe positioned within its magnetic field and wherein the vaporized particles entering and being expelled to the said pipe become magnetized by passing through a said magnetic field generator. Uh, which we've talked about. We have agreed that you could either use an electromagnet, and it states that, or it could be a permanent magnet. Okay. Right here. Right there. Alright, so DC versus AC. Your opinions on that? I don't know. Um, a couple more questions. Um, another guy is working on this, and he was trying to figure out, um, do we need to, um, well, I'll tell you the goal. The goal would be to take a gas and ionize it, so you take away electrons, and then you vaporize electron, or, um, like metallic um, ions, and then they would attach to the gas and make a gas lattice. Um, his concern was, do you, need to, do you need to do this in separate... Uh, um, time events, uh, the first one being take away the electrons and then subject them to the ions to attach them. Um, do you have to use heat to attach the, the gas lattice together? I mean, how do we do that? Um, in my opinion, and what I'm going to be trying, I'm just going to run it all into one chamber and it'll all happen at once. Um, the argon will be ionized, the particles will be vaporized, and you'll have heat within that arc, that spark, um, and all those things combined will will combine these materials as they flow through this gas processor. I could be totally wrong, but again, even with Alex Petty's work, without using any gas processor of any type, uh, he's getting good results. So um, it's worth trying on its own and then running it through the processor and then trying to um, ionize the gas first uh, and second and third. Uh, another thing I want to show you real quick. Be right back. All right, uh, here I have uh, something thing got smashed. Uh, what this is is a uh, an air ionizer uh, creates ozone and um, I would like to try to use this in this particular um, application of a gas processor and I don't really know if this would be good for this at all. Here's the device. So here's what it looks like on the inside. Might be hard to see but this is a pretty big one. This is, uh, this is a real big one. Um, there's the information on it if you want to look it up. But uh, basically what it does is it creates ozone and uh, it purifies the air. It's meant to, to be in your house. Um, or actually this one's for industrial because it's giant. But I have two of these. Uh, one smaller than the other I got from a couple of uh, closing stores. But you can see that it looks like a uh, high voltage transformer in there. And what it does is it uh, literally creates ozone. Um, and surely there's got to be a way to use this in my application for processing my gases. So if you have any ideas or thoughts on that, uh, shoot them at me. Send me an email or something. All right, um, I think that's enough about the gas for now. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be trying argon. Uh, another thing I am going to, um, a guy by the name of Bill Williams, uh, you gotta get on the internet and Google his name. 
but uh, he's created an open source uh, hydroxy cell that's a split gas cell. Um, a guy by the name of Mike Powers has also done this, but his is not open source right now. Um, I believe he wants, wants to do that, but he's not ready, I believe. Um, but once he does, that'll be good too. We'll have two different versions. But Bill has open sourced his, and he um, is willing to send me an old one to borrow. And what I'm going to do is, what, well, what it does is, it, it is it's an hydroxy cell that separates the gas upon creation, uh, or upon whenever you make the gas. It's got a, a, um, a membrane in there which allows electricity to flow through it, but the gas separates. And the hydrogen comes out one side, and the oxygen comes out the other side. And it, it does it in such an efficient manner that you can take the hydrogen side and light the end of a hose and it will not flash back. It will only burn once it gets into the ambi ambient air because hydrogen by itself will not explode. Um, and what that tells me is that you can take hydrogen, run it through my gas processor with this electrical arc, and that's when I'll be using my carbon electrodes. Um, and then the carbon and hydrogen together will, I hope, create a a much better, higher efficiency uh, magnetic gas. Even though there's no metallic particles in it, um, from the research of Alex Petty, I feel pretty good about that. And uh, Mike Powers has been working on this with me too. He's a real nice guy. Uh, Bill's a real nice guy. I've met a ton of people that are, are really wonderful people. Don, um, Matt, uh, Blaine, all you guys. You guys are great. Uh, so let's get started on the core. We're going to talk, talk about the core of the primary. Um, I'm trying to figure out how this is supposed to work. Um, I did not know if you should take the pipe, because it says it has a core. I'll read the first sentence on the first or second page of the patent. It says, the structure comprises a primary voltage inductive winding having a magnetic forming core. Okay, that's what it says. So if you look at the pictures, and all the pictures I've found, you can see that is on a core material over top the other pipe. You can see that there. Okay, so this would be like your uh, either your copper or your plastic pipe. We'll talk about that in a minute. And um, then you have your core there. Um, I was wondering, it, do you think the transition between the non-magnetic pipe and the magnetic forming core um, would be like a a plastic pipe to an iron pipe and you wrap the wire around the iron pipe and then transition back to plastic or do you just slide the um, the iron f or the uh, the magnetic forming core do you do you just slide it right over top the pipe luckily later here and when I find it when I read it to you it actually says that it slips over top of it so it's, it's not a piece of it uh, the closed loop tubing of non-magnetic material is continuous and you slip the primary coil over top of that. That's what the patents are saying. Right, so I'll read a few more things here for you. Uh, it says here the magnetic accelerator assembly comprises primary windings uh, on a magnetic core. So um, again I was trying to figure out is it an air core or is it not? I'm going to try both but um, it looks like it's going to be on an iron core from what I've gathered. And that's what I'll be starting, and that's what um, Alex has tried to. He's tried all sorts of stuff. Um, Alex has, has really, really done a lot of extensive research on this. Uh, I'm glad to be able to talk to him. All right, right here it says, this answered my question I just told you. The electrical particle generation of claim four, wherein said particles, particle accelerator further comprises of a magnetic forming core and wherein said core has an opening slightly greater than the outside diameter of the said tubing adopted to receive the same. So basically, here's what I have. This might be pretty big for what uh, I'm doing, but that is a one inch inside. I have a plastic piece on a, with a bearing on here because I'm going to put it on my lathe. What I was going to do is turn down little channels for my wire to sit in, but I, I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. I may just make um, divider plates It'd be a lot easier for what I'm trying to do um, but there this is just a piece of iron and um, it is a half inch wall thickness here two inches on the outside and one inch on the inside and it fits right over top of my piping I'll show you all right now I'll be using this PEX pipe that I showed everyone in the last couple of videos um, this one doesn't have it on there but basically this fits really nicely on there. It's got a little bit of slop, but um, 
when I get this on there because this piece is so bent, um, it'll be straight here and then bend back around to my my other particle accelerator, which I'll show you in a minute. All right, so that's about it for the core. I was trying to figure out how that worked, and I believe that's how it is um, from what I've gathered up from talking to people and from this information. Now, I would think an air core would actually respond faster, and you could um, you could do things faster with an air core, but this core what it does when you have an air core magnetics are spread out when you have a steel core of some sort or, an, or some sort of a mag magnetic core um, the everything's concentrated around that and uh, that's a good thing for what we're trying to do okay let's talk about the pipe this is a big dilemma what's the pipe made out of the non-magnetic closed loop tube okay what is it um, there's a couple things I know for a fact that the devices were copper. Um, from talking to Don, which has personally seen these uh, multiple times, um, and Don is the guy who created these Stan Meyer State videos. By the way, in case you didn't catch that earlier, so I asked him. That's what he told me. Um, let me read you what I got written down for notes. Da -da. All right. Um, soft copper. It's either three eighths or a half inch, and I've confirmed that with a picture I've uh, I've uh, modified here. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, three or four turns of loops, um, depending on what it was. The couple different kinds have di different uh, tube uh, number of tube counts, uh, looped looped tube counts. Can't speak. And um, so that's that's kind of confirmed. Now here's what's interesting. Um, there's a couple ideas here that I need your your thoughts on, um, and one of them is plastic versus copper or aluminum. I know that the devices were copper, and whenever you have a voltage running through a copper pipe, things are just different. Everything acts a little different than when you run it through a solid wire. Um, and one thing would be the skin effect. Um, what they call the skin effect. Um, when you run electricity through any any wire, when you get up to a certain voltage, um, you get this skin effect, and it literally the voltage rides around the outside of the wire or whatever, which in this case would be a pipe. Um, but you're not running electricity through the pipe; you're just running the magnetic particles. But it could be part of it. So here's what I want to read to you. Um, this is just some very interesting interesting thoughts. Now if you had copper pipe you're gonna get a lens effect in my opinion. But in my opinion as well that's that might not be a bad thing. And here's the reason. If you had a copper pipe like this. This is its little piece. And you drop a magnet through there. You've all seen this. And it got stuck. No, it didn't get stuck. It just took that long. Okay. Yeah, it did get stuck. This is a bad dem demonstration. <laughs> Try this this way. Okay, here we go. Okay, see how long that took? It should have just fallen through there. All right, everybody's seen this demonstration. If you haven't, try it on your own. It's pretty cool. Um, but basically, the magnet falls real slow through there, and the eddy currents are created in this copper pipe. Now, here's the question, and this is real interesting. It says in the patent, an electrical particle generator comprising of a non-magnetic closed-loop tubing passing magnetic lines of force. Okay, if you're using plastic pipe, uh, the magnetic lines of force would pass through it, uh, and it would not be affected by the the pipe would not be affecting the magnetic lines of force. But in the patent, and it says this a couple places, passing magnetic lines of force. All right. When I dropped that magnet through this tube, uh, it created eddy currents on the outside of this tube. Well, that would be passing the magnetic lines of flux from the magnet to the copper and then to the outside of the copper to the where the coils would be round. So in my opinion, even though you'd have Lin's Law drag, it may not be affected by the coil pickups. Um, and that's just an interesting thought I had while doing doing all this research. 
why would somebody use that much copper pipe when it when it would have that much of a drag of a downfall towards your system um, either you didn't have plastic piping at the time that was what you wanted um, or you used copper pipe for a reason okay um, find another spot in here where it talks about I think that's that's the only thing I had marked there's another place in there where it talks about it but it says passing magnetic lines of force now I may be looking at that too deep um, I personally think that plastic would work better but if you have this skin effect where you have a high um, you know you have you just have things flowing across the outside of this tubing and these coils are picking that up um, I don't know I am going to try both um, I have gotten um, a couple of donations from people thank you and I believe I will have enough now to purchase um, enough copper pipe to make this work copper pipes is expensive um, if you guys know any plumbers that can get this for like real real cheap or got some scrap let me know it's got to be soft iron I'm sorry soft copper the stuff that's in a spiral when you buy it but uh, it probably is just cheaper just to purchase it here by the time you pay for shipping so that's what I'm gonna do now let me show you a video I'm sorry let me show you a picture of something you guys will like this this is pretty cool this is kind of hard to see but I will post this picture in the description but what I've done is I've taken the uh, I've got Google SketchUp pulled here pulled up and I've taken a photograph from a, uh, a still from uh, one of the images from the Stan Meyer estate uh, videos okay here you can see the uh, the driver coils uh, and also in one of his lectures he talks about he, developing different things with his um, EPG system and one of those things is more of like an oscillating field type deal and uh, Don has told me basically what this is is there's a closed end here and it spirals around and then it comes out here and then and then that's it it stops so this this actually doesn't go clo closed looped all the way around it actually stops and what he told me and what I thought of as well is that whenever you'd energize this one it would push and at the same time you can energize this one the opposite way and pull and what you can do is is you can push and pull the gas here which would push and pull the gas through this tubing instead of continuously running it um, you're actually pulsing it which is just an interesting concept build I believe now, but he does talk about that so here's what I've done here's the copper pipe um, and well let me start over this is 18 inches in diameter um, from three from two different sources now one of Stan himself saying it and then also Don which actually saw this stuff um, I've gotten 18 inches diameter from the outside to the outside so I stuck this in Google SketchUp and drew a circle 18 inches in diameter here it's hard to see but 18 inches there alright and then what I've done is calculated everything else so the width of this pipe I calculated between 3 eighths or a half inch which is what, exactly what Don told me um, here I got half inch, but here I got three eighths or half inch because it was. Excuse me, it's really hard to tell. The, the photograph is extremely blurry. Um, here I was trying to measure the width of these coils. I got about two and a quarter inches, and then uh, for the width of the coils, I got about five eighths. And oddly enough, these um, these bobbins here are almost I identically to those sizes. Um, unfortunately. They don't fit on my core, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do something about that. But I'm gonna have to make my own divider plates. I was thinking about just using good old CDs here and making my own divider plates. But uh, let's keep going. All right, the coil length here uh, I've gotten written down three and one eighth, and then uh, the width of the what looks like the core material is gonna be an uh, three quarter of an inch. It's what it looks like the inside of the the core material is so the inside here the other thing I measured was the width of the outside coils I got five eighths of an inch wide um, I've got two inches this way from the outside of the bobbin and the the actual wire itself I got about an inch and three quarter okay so I drew that up in Google SketchUp real quick um, I just wanted to um, I wanted to do that so there's your 18 inches in diameter there you can see the width of both of the outside of that and the ins uh, where the wire is at and then the width alright and then I got the um, 
the core material there looks like about three quarters of an inch so the pipe's going to be like half or, or uh, what we talked about three eighths all right and then you got five eighths for the width of those coils um, three and one eighth for the length of all of it together and the width of the coils I got about two and a quarter and then there's my uh, there's my tubing size so that I thought was very interesting um, I thought I uh, would try my best to figure out dimensions and I have one dimension 18 inches in diameter I calculated everything else off that I thought that was pretty cool so uh, that was one thing that I did do all right I'm gonna give you a quick little update on uh, the things that I've been working on starting particle generator here this is my gas processor particle generator um, this is a four inch I try this is the third time I've tried to tell you guys how wide this uh, P PVC pipe is it's four inches last time I tried to tell you my capacitor exploded that was awesome uh, but that's a four inch piece of pipe here threaded on both sides um, I put a piece of plexiglass underneath the inside of that one so I could see in there um, I got nipples sticking through here air the meant for air and they got uh, they hold my um, you can see they hold my electrodes in there and then I got an input and an output and uh, I'll be hooking this up to this particle uh, accelerator that I built this is just a test uh, three quarter inch PEX here uh, half inch input which is probably plenty big because it probably made it real small but it's just what I did um, I gotta put a gauge on this yet to find out the pressure inside here my core material will be placed across here with my, my coils around it um, um, uh, let's see, I'll be using, I got my Aragon tank right here, um, I was lucky enough to have a welder, um, so I have uh, Aragon to use for this testing. Um, here's my high voltage transformer and my capacitors. I'm going to have to, I guess, use some sort of a, uh, a rectifying diode. Uh, that's another thing I need. Does anybody have any high voltage diodes or high voltage capacitors they're willing to either let me borrow? I don't blow them up <laughs> or you can send my way uh, let me know send me an email or something um, but here's my carbon electrodes um, and this will be used for the hydrogen oxygen side of this experiment and um, another thing I got um, while, while I got this core material uh, my cousin owns a, a steel manufacturing shop and he, he allowed me to um, he donated a couple of pieces of tubing and this core material for me to use for this experiment so that was pretty cool but what I did is I got some stainless steel here of various sizes and um, these are for the water fuel cell and they're just some random sizes that fit inside each other you can see um, probably the smallest ones I got is about three quarter the biggest one I got is uh, four inches. This is a big one. So uh, that'll be interesting. Different sizes of thickness in between here. Um, and it's just for, for quick testing. But this is all 403 stainless. So um, that's a good thing. Um, another thing I did um, on my YouTube. Uh, basically I'm going to start um, incorporating uh, a new name with what I'm doing. And my research is going to be called um, RWG Research. Um, and it's just an open source research. Uh, my form, whenever that gets put up from a guy by the name of Matt, um, it will be under that. And we can go there and discuss all this information in one place. Um, so if, I, if I'm working on a certain project and I need uh, people's thoughts and ideas and then other people are working on that as well, they can go there and we can collaborate. Instead of posting on multiple forms all over the place, we'll be able to collaborate on one form uh, that um, basically I'll be using because I can't keep up with all that other stuff. Um, there's a lot going on in life right now and uh, it's just the way it is. So I'm trying to, uh, Matt is trying to help me do that and uh, also get donations coming in. Um, again, if you would like to donate towards this research, um, it's all going towards building these devices. Um, and, I mean, that's it. In return, you're getting information, thoughts, uh, seeing things being built, and hopefully we can change the world together. Um, you can send money to uh, RWG 
42985 at AOL.com uh, via PayPal or if you uh, want to send donation of parts, pieces, materials there's a, a, a document in the description that you can open up and you can see what kind of parts and pieces that I need um, I still have to add high voltage diodes and high voltage capacitors on there um, but uh, that's it I don't really have a whole lot more to say except for thank you um, and if you can't donate resources um, and you're wondering what you can do donate your time Go to the description, download these patents, read through this material, give me, give me your thoughts on it because every person in the world sees something in a different manner uh, and it's going to take us all together to make this actually probably um, really get a good enough information here to make something extraordinary. We're all going to have to work together. Okay. So it's about us, not about me. And uh, this is open source RWG research. Uh, hopefully the website will be up soon. Uh, Matt, thank you. And everyone else, thank you. Um, I'm gaining more and more and more information and more contacts. Uh, like I said, the best way to get a hold of me is through AOL. Uh, my email address, rwg42985 at AOL.com. If you're watching this video on another channel, um, the uh, my original YouTube is rwg42985. Um, go there and you can get a hold of me there or my email. So uh, this video information, anything is free to give out. Uh, download this video and upload it. I've got another downloadable link directly to uh, a server that you can download this video so you don't have to download it from YouTube. All right, Check the description and uh, have some fun, people. Uh, it's all about um, having fun and learning. And I'm here with you. And that's it. So this is Russ. Uh, today's date, I believe, is the 28th. Uh, yes, March 28th, 2011, and tomorrow morning, uh, me and my wife are going to be having my second baby. So, wish me luck, alright? Peace, everyone. Have a good one. Be blessed, and uh, be safe. Thanks.